How do you approach Auto Boards with your top pair of strong kickers type hands without a card of the suit in your hand? And this is a tough question. Um, I think the answer is that you have to think about how likely they are to have flushes. Like for example, if you open it and the big wine calls, they're going to have a lot of flush type holdings. So in that spot, you're going to want to uh, tread a little more lightly. While they have more weak hands, they also will have a lot more strong hands. So you have to play a little bit more defensive, I think, in those spots. Let's say somebody 3-bets you when you call and the flop is like ace, jack, nine, all the same suit. They're very, very rarely going to have flushes there. Because like what hands do they have to make flushes? Any king, queen suited, king, ten suited, queen, ten suited? So in a spot like that, if I have like ace, queen, I'm feeling a little bit a little bit better than some of these other spots. So the first thing you have to do is you have to decide how frequently does my opponent actually have flushes. The second thing that you do is you have to decide how, within all of my hands... How strong is this holding? You know, if it's actually one of your best hands, sometimes you're going to have to get in there and just, like, go the distance, you know? The third thing you have to decide is how aggressive do I think my opponent is. That's also going to determine whether you want to play more defensive with your hand, whether you want to call down, etc. So, I would say there's a lot of different strategies you want to use in this spot, but the most important thing is to think about how, why, how frequently both players have flushes, and then kind of base your strategy around a combination of that and all of your holdings. Hey, like, how do you deal with paired flops when you have an overbear? You check calm down or check back in position. Um, I generally like to bet really small because on those paired flops, your opponent either has three of a kind or the other pair or they have nothing. So small bets are very good in that spot because if they have nothing, you kind of force them to fold. Or if, if they do call, they have to call with a lot of super weak hands. So I would recommend with your over pairs in those spots, generally lean towards betting a very small size. Then you can also do it with your bluff. So you kind of keep everything together. You should also have lots of checks. It's totally fine to check some overcars too. But you want to use that small size so that they're like in a really tough spot. You know, you want to make it so if they have ace high, they like kind of have to call, but they don't really want to call. Like that's what your aim should be. It's a very static spot. You know, it's a spot where you know most hands have missed, and in general they're gonna have to fold. So the best size there is kind of the opposite of boards like 10, 9, 7, you know, where there's a lot of draws, you want to use a bigger size. Keep it small. Barrel to high frequency and try and get value from those pairs they can have. Also, keep in mind what pair isn't trips or what pair is trips. So if it's like 227, I'd bet normal because you don't have to be afraid of 2x. But if it's like Jack Jack 3 and they have a pot, you have to tread more lightly. So again, think how often they have trips, use a small size, barrel to high frequency. AL says for BM strategy, would you say ACR or Stars has the soft sound for the old hand tables? Choosing a table is an important step. Uh, I'm not really able to answer this question because I haven't played those sites enough. I like this, like, oh, this actually is going to be too small. All right, last hand. I'm going to fold here. Uh, I don't know, man. Like, uh, they're probably both fine, I think. They're both okay. Uh, I could see either being okay. I just, like, I don't want to give an opinion here because, frankly, I haven't played either of those tables very much to, to know, you know? It seemed like when I played some of them for the lab, I did some playing explain at those stakes. It seemed the NL100, it seemed those stakes on ACR were more reggae and stars had more recreational players. So probably stars, but not 100%, man. Hey, Doug, sent you this hand yesterday, but it was already too late. Can you check it out today? Sure. Let's see what it is. All right. I'll even know if anything too interesting is happening here on our tables, guys. Don't, don't sweat it, though. All right, so we've got one cent, two cent, fold, 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 raise, call, standard, check that, call. Okay, so on the flop, I, I really don't mind either option. I, I think that both, um, both call and raise have merit. Um, raising is obviously good. You deny a bunch of equity and you build a platform when you get there, and then you know calling certainly profitable. I think that either you can make a case for either playing the flop. Okay. Turn four. So you decide to go for the lead. It's like, it's kind of okay. I, I, I don't mind. So there's like a couple of different strategies you can use here. First off, you could decide to have a, a small size with all of your hands. And that way you get to bluff pretty efficiently. Or you can do a big size with a few hands. Good hands and bluffs. This doesn't really fit either category. You went half pot? Doesn't make much sense to me. Because, like, what... Like, if you go half pot, you kind of can't bet this with a six or a three. It's too big. 
Um, and if you're betting fours and draws, you want to go bigger. So this size, I, I don't really understand what you're trying to accomplish, I guess. I'd recommend going a bigger or smaller size. All right, so you decided to lead. Not a fan, but whatever. Check that. Alright, so let's start off with this, okay? If you have a full house, which is basically what you're saying you have here, you're not saying you have a. Are you saying you have a four? God, this is a really fucking weird hand. It's super weird because, like, I would actually never be in this spot, right? Because I wouldn't do this turn lead. So, I have to, like, pretend as if. I had a strategy where I was doing this, but I guess let's, let's start off with the river, right? So on the river, you can check or you can bet of. You can either check all of your hands, which is kind of okay because, okay, so, so let's, let's just say two examples, right? Let's say on the turn I was betting sixes and fours, right? If I was doing that, I would check all of my hands on the river because I wouldn't want my sixes to get screwed by me betting fours and checking sixes. Because then if I check, I'm always kind of weak, right? So, if I'm betting sixes on the turn, I'm gonna check all of my hands on the river. Because this river isn't good for me. I don't really have aces, you know? Very often at all. So, if I'm not doing that, if I'm betting either a four or a bluff, why wouldn't you just bet again? Because an ace doesn't beat a four, right? Four is the other kind. So, I would only check to begin with if I was not going to have, or if I was going to have sixes in my range. So, I'm now going to assume we have sixes, right? Because, like, otherwise I wouldn't be checking. So, let's just say we have sixes and fours. Why wouldn't I fold a hand like king nine, right? Makes sense. And then bluff with a hand like six five. Because then I block a hand like six six, a six four, etc. And, you know, straights, etc. And that way, I know he's less likely to have these really strong hands like full houses. This hand should just be a fold within the strategy. You check raise this, then what are you actually going to fold? Like, you've got to fold some hands, right? So I guess, I guess to, to summarize, the turn lead size didn't make sense. The river check basically says to me, you're going to have 6x. And then if you're going to have 6x, your bluff should, should consist of 6x in conjunction with your 4x for value. And you shouldn't be using these Miss Flush Draws kind no matter what. I mean, turn is like, okay, this turn sucks. And, the, and, and, but like, you made your bet here, man. If you check flop and check call, then he's going to have way more bluffs, like 9-8 or, you know, backdoor flush draws, etc. If you bet, you, you're forcing him to have a lot of aces. And like, you don't want to do that. You want to, when you have those middling hands, guys, you want to keep their range as wide as possible by taking more passive lines and more checks. So definitely check flop. As played, this is fine. Um, I kind of don't mind check raise, but I probably wouldn't want to play value like that, so I'm cool with taking this line. What's up, man? Let's take this question. All right, here we go. This is our last last strategy question for the day. All right, call raise. What are you doing here? Is this a troll? Obviously call this raise. I don't see what you're doing. Like what? what's gonna happen if you get four bet here? Clearly just call. Okay. All right, well, that's what I get for trying to help you plebs. What is going on? My, my second hand of the tournament <laughs> is kings. <laughs> Uh, why against dog? Why can this be against like whoever's? All right, going through that. Thousand chips to go, dog. We got the kings, guys. Don't do it, dog. Don't do it. Uh, if he comes in for the four time, don't do it. Come for the five time. 